Does this sound familiar to you? So you see a chess book that is amazing. Everybody talks about this book, how you must study this particular chess book. All right, this book, if you study it, will get you to whatever level you need to get to. It's a fantastic book. You've read the reviews. Everybody says it's amazing. So you go out, you buy the chess book, and you plan to absolutely study the hell out of it and gain as much knowledge from it as you can. So you start doing that. You're happy. You play around. You, you know, it's a nice shiny front cover and things like that. And you open it up, take it out of its set package, and you read the first chapter, and you're really, really enthusiastic. And you might even get the chess board out or you set it up to a you know, board online or something like that. And then you start studying, studying the first chapter. And yeah, you're really into this book. It's really, really good. But then the next time you come to the book, it's not quite as fresh. And you do chapter two and it's not, it's not quite working, but you still study it a little bit. And then eventually, you know, your energy and enthusiasm for that book wanes a little bit. But then you spot on the distant horizon your new chess book, right? And this book is amazing. It's recommended by everybody. It's recommended by grandmasters, club players. It's amazing. So you've got to buy that book. You're going to study the hell out of that book. Leave the other one. I'll come back to that at some point. And then you start studying this new chess book. You know, you touch the front cover. It's nice and shiny. And you start reading the book and you're really enthusiastic. And you get your chessboard out and then you, know, you play through a few chapters and then you do a little bit more, but then you've got that thing coming up, right? So you normally study every Friday, but then you've got that meal. So you go out for that meal and things like that. And then you come back the following Friday, but then you, you kind of got to do something else. You've got to tidy the garage out and sweep up the, the rubbish from the garden, whatever it is. And you kind of know, you've had that break from that book a little bit. And then you come to it again on a Wednesday, but you're feeling tired. So you don't really actually finish that book but what you do do is you spot on the distant horizon another chess book now this chess book has been recommended by everybody and what you're going to do you're going to pick this book up you're going to study the hell out of it you're going to really really focus the other two i will definitely come back to at some point but this new chess book is brand new it's it's look at the front cover as well the front cover is amazing fantastic title it's got rave reviews from absolutely everybody so you get the chess book and then yeah you know what's going to happen you sort of run out of steam and then you end up with like 100 chess books on, on the shelf, right? That is, in my experience, the approach that most people have to studying chess books. And it's all wrong, right? It's all wrong for two very, very different reasons. The first reason is you never actually finish the chess book. And that approach of actually studying in a chronological manner is also completely wrong and, and a little bit nonsense, to be honest. That's not how you should be studying a chess book. And, you know, I've been there, I've done the same thing. But I realized this sort of later on in, in, my, in my chess study in time that this was the wrong approach. And actually, the right approach is to do this. So take the book, Michael Steen, Simple Chess, which the position on the board is actually taken from. And in that book, you get seven chapters. And it's a very, very thin book. And it's got loads of information. So this is one of yonder shiny chess books that I would recommend right up to 1800 level, maybe a little bit beyond. But the approach to studying this book would not be Friday night. Friday night? Who studies on a Friday night? All right, Saturday afternoon. Saturday afternoon, uh, I'm going to sit down with this new book, if you say you just bought this book, and I'm going to study chapter one. And every Saturday, I'm going to do a different chapter. Wrong. That's the wrong approach. The right approach is to sit down with the book on a Saturday and study that chapter, study the introduction, Right, which this position is taken from, and you know you can be having a look at this position and you know analyzing the position if you want to, if you've not seen it before, and study that chapter, and then the next time you study it, don't go to chapter two, right? That is a complete waste of your time. It's not how the brain works. It's not how you memorize information from your short term into your long term memories and into your sort of working knowledge. Really, what you want to be doing is looking again at chapter one, right? Recapping chapter one looking at the positions in chapter one again, spending half the amount of time on the book as you did the first time. So if you spent an hour on that Saturday afternoon, you know, just before the football came on, and you studied the first chapter, then I would do the same thing again, but study it in half the amount of time. So look at the chapter one in half an hour. And then again, my next revisit would be the same chapter again, and maybe look at the thing in 15 minutes or something like that. And probably a few, a few flick throughs in the week just to recap that knowledge, basically like Chessel does with the space repetition algorithm. That's how I'll be studying chess books. And then eventually get onto chapter two and do the same for chapter two. You know, now we're half an hour, 15 minutes or whatever the book is. 
you know, if it's a bigger chapter, obviously you break that down. But that's a, that's the approach that I would take to studying all different academic texts. And chess should be seen as an academic pursuit. It's not an Ag Agatha Christie novel. You know, it's not Lavender and Brown where you're going to start from chapter one and you know you're going to read all the way through and get to the end uh, in a sort of just in that chronological manner with one read. That's how you would read fiction. But studying chess is not fiction. And what you want to do then is study it in that way. You are going to be strengthening, you know, the things and the lessons that you pick up. So let's look at this position then. So what Michael Steen has done in this position is taken all the pieces off apart from the kings. And in the book, he actually takes the kings off as well. But I can't do that on the Lee Chess database. And what he's left you with is the pawn structure. And why this is important is because immediately he's talking about outposts in the position. And he's talking about why d5 is absolutely the square to be on if you're white. Cannot be kicked by an enemy pawn, and that should be all about controlling the d5 square. So if you can land a knight or a bishop or a piece on d5, usually a knight, then you're going to be in a stronger position. And he also talks about this square, f5, being potentially good, and c6 being potentially good. But at the moment, black can kick this off. He uncovered this square, and at the moment, this b7 pawn is covering this square. But if this pawn ever came forward, if this pawn ever came to g5, for example, and that would just give away the f5 square. And he also talks in the book how this pawn on c3 is doing a good job of covering you know, the d4 square. So if we played a pawn to c4, not only would it be taking away a square that we could whack a knight on, for example, and covering this potential diagonal would also be absolutely giving away the d4 square. So that's what I'd do. You know, I'd look at a position in the book. And I'd read it all properly first. And then the second time I come from it, I would test my own knowledge of that position. And then likewise with all the different positions. That's how to study chess books.